Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I wanted to take a look at creating this lake scene. Now I've done a lot of tutorials on water of various different kinds and they've all been a little bit complicated. So I wanted to take a much simpler route. And although it is quite simple, there is some quite useful technique involved here. So let's make a start. So first of all, let's check out our project setup. 1920, 1080, 25 frames a second, duration of 500 frames. So the first thing I want to do is to create a displacement map that's going to drive the ripples on the lake. So to do that, we're going to come over to the library and generators. And we're first of all going to bring in a color solid. And then above that, we're going to bring in a clouds. With the color solid, I just want to make it black and I also want to double its scale. So 200% scale. So then let's talk about the clouds. I'm just going to reduce the speed, I think, down to something like 0.3. So the trouble about motions clouds is that it's a fractal generator with very, very little detail in it and very little control over what you can do. So you have to get clever with it. Now, one of the problems is you can't actually get the scale very small the minimum horizontal and vertical scale you can have is eight. So I'm going to get a go with a vertical scale of eight and a horizontal scale a little bit wider because these are ripples of 12. Now, I actually want this to be much more fine grained because my lake is quite big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double the width and height. So 3840 for the width and 2160 for the height. And having done that, we can halve the scale over here, so 50% scale. And suddenly we've got a lot more detail and this is going to be much more workable. But we're going to do something else and that is to make a clone of this. Right click, make clone layer. We're going to come over to filters and blur and Gaussian blur. We're going to set the amount to one to eight. And we're going to come over to properties and I'm going to set the blend mode. I could set it to subtract, which gives us that. And that does actually work. But actually, if we come down to difference, we get a lot more detail like that. And this is going to work better for our ripples. Now, you'll notice that we've got this sort of tide mark around the sides. And that's because we need to come to the Gaussian blur and turn on crop. So this is the basis of our displacement map. So I've called that group displace and what I also need to do is I need to put it into a group of its own. So I'm going to come to object and new group and drop that into there. And I'm going to set this top group to fixed resolution. So the next thing I want to do is to bring in my image. So let's bring in the lake sunset and I want to drag it out into its own group at the top. Now I've made this double width. So we've got something for the camera to track across. Uh, and therefore we need to reset its scale to 100% like that. Then I'm going to duplicate this group, right click and duplicate, and I'm just going to quickly rename them. So the top group I've called forest and the bottom group I've called lake. So this layer that's inside the lake group, let's come over and we need to rotate it through 180 degrees on X to get the re reflection like that. And I also need to bring it down on Y by negative 180. And that's because the lake shoreline is below the center line of the screen. So then what we can do is we can take this lake group and we can come to filters and distortion and bump map. And we can take this group, which is our displacement group or the group that's containing the displacement group and drag it into the bump map source like that. And let's set the amount to negative one. And you can already see that we've got some ripples on the lake. Now, what we need to happen is that we have perspective on the ripples. So that the distant ones are smaller than the ones in the foreground. I'm just going to increase that bump map amount to negative 10, just so we can really clearly see what's going on. And that really does look like a bit of a mess when we see it like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down into that displace group there and we're going to turn on four corner and we're going to show the controls and we're going to enter the following values. So negative 2500 for bottom left X, 180 for the Y 
positive 2500 for the bottom right x and 180 for the y, zero for this value here, and then negative 450 for this one, and negative 450 for that one. And it's looking a little bit better, but we also need to compensate with the y offset of the layer. So we're going to go with the same negative 180 there. And now you'll see we're matching up much better with our lake itself. So that is a little bit too much, this negative 10 amount. Uh, but you'll notice that as we go down, it sort of looks more and more calm. You know, negative one is sort of barely moving. I think I'm going to go with negative three. That's probably going to do me for this. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make a new group above everything else. And I'm going to put everything into it. So grab all that, drop it into that group there. And I'm going to turn this group to 3D. So make that 3D, however you want to make that 3D. And then I'm going to add a camera, so add object camera. I am going to add to the camera a basic motion, motion path. I'm going to come here to the control points and these two X control points. The first one I'm going to set to something like negative 540 and the second to positive 540. We've got a lot more of the scene to play with, but that's probably going to be enough for the duration that we we're playing with. And now we get this sort of gentle track across, which is quite nice. So the other thing I want to do is I want to import the reeds as the foreground layer. Again, I'm going to drag it right up to the top there into a new group. So first of all, we need to key them out. So let's come to filters and masks and keying and grab the luma here. And all we need to do is invert the luma here. And now we've got the reeds like that. Now, the problem we have is that we've got no parallax because the reeds are on the same plane as the background scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the camera and I'm going to open up its Z position and I'm going to set that to 2300. And then I'm going to come back to this group with everything in it and we just need to scale it up. So we're going to go for 200% on that. And we're back to where we were. And I'm going to come to this reads group and set the Z position to positive 2000. We just need to bump up their scale a little bit, possibly even as you go all the way up to 100 like that. So they're really in the foreground like that. There's only one thing I omitted to do that I should have done, and that's come into this lake group here and the bump map. And probably at this degree of bump, you don't notice it. But if I turn it all the way up, you'll notice that we really need to turn on repeat edges like that. Otherwise, we see through to black. So turn on repeat edges in the bump map group. And then I'll just reduce that back down again to my preferred roughness level for the lake. And that's pretty much it. So I hope that's been useful. A very simple effect that actually creates quite a, an interesting moody scene. So thanks very much for watching. See you again soon.